MetService has had more problems with its website after confirming it was the victim of a denial of service attack yesterday. Now that's the same cyber attack the NZX was subject to last week. So what's going on here? While well, Professor Dave Parry from AUT's Department of Con- Computer Science joins me now. Do we have any more clues, Dave, as to why we're a target? Um, no, no direct evidence. Uh, these people are very, very keep things very quiet. But it looks to me very much as though, uh, because of the publicity of, uh, from the previous attacks, um, these attackers are basically now using New Zealand as a sort of short window for their skills, really, um, so that they're, they're demonstrating that they can um, attack sites. Um, the sites that we know are being attacked almost, well, you know, won't be paying a ransom, so it's not um, they're not going to get anything off that. But they'll be showing that to their criminal counterparts to say, look, we can, we can attack sites that you think you can get a ransom from, um, and that's how they work. So they're basically using us as a reference, are they? Yeah, I think so. Effectively, it's advertising. Uh, yeah. And what? Do they make money then out of contracting them, themselves out to somebody else? Usually, that's the way it works, yeah. Um, uh, I mean, one of the things about these things is that, is that because, because of the nature, because distributed attack, the computers that are actually attacking could be anywhere. Uh, and, of course, the people that control them could be somewhere else, uh, will be somewhere else as well. Um, so it, it's a very sort of mobile um, sort of um, tool that they can use. And so in order to have the infrastructure of actually sort of extorting the money and all that sort of stuff, they may well be working with uh, other gangs as well, uh, as well as doing it for themselves. But um, quite often they seem to split these things up. What do you make of the targets? Because first off, it was the NZX, right? So quite a high-profile target associated with the finance industry. Now, it seems to be all over the shop. Met service, some banks, um, RNZ, stuff. What's going on here with the choice of targets? So I I, I suspect there are other targets as well, some some of whom may may not have actually noticed because they're they're not, you know, it's not that critical. Um, But... Basically, uh, financial services are always always a top priority for, for these people because the, the feeling is that, that if they uh, can discredit the financial um, uh, website, then, then that's a very good target for extortion. Uh, other targets, things like Met Service and, and, the, and the news news items, are high profile. Uh, Met Service probably is relatively vulnerable because it's got to update its its uh, site a lot. It's not a, a static site, so so something like stuff or, or Radio New Zealand. Um, although, of course, you wanted to keep up to, up to date, it doesn't really matter if it's down for a couple of minutes or something like that. Whereas something that's quite dynamic um, may it may be may be quite important. So, so generally, these these sites are more vulnerable to these attacks because um, they have to deal with them very quickly in order to keep the service up. Do we have some kind of universal weakness in our internet service providers here? I, I don't think so. I mean, th- these attacks are really, really large. I mean, the the end of X attack attack was it was pretty much the same size as as the uh, virtually the largest attack, attack ever recorded which was against amazon uh, last year um so these are these are overwhelming attacks and really the situation is that we don't really have the infrastructure as, as a nation um or the for these, these particular companies and particular organizations really don't have the the size of of um web services and things like that that the other uh, companies would have. We also don't really have any uh, cloud providers currently based in New Zealand, so that would uh, one of the ways that you defend against these is to move your uh, technology to the cloud very rapidly. Uh, That's probably more difficult here than it would be, say, in the States. Um, And I think realistically, probably um, we've prepared less for this than than some other potential disaster scenarios. Um, I'm sure that all the uh, all the large companies like Akamai are getting lots of inquiries at the moment about how to protect uh, your website. So what's the fix here? If nobody's paying a ransom, how do we get them to go away? Uh, effectively, what you do is you defeat the attacks because um, the, the, when, once you have um, set up your, your security system, so your firewall, and you have extra capacity that you can turn on very quickly, and you have all sorts of issues about... Um, understanding probably what what an attack looks like very early so you can start uh, blocking those um, uh, those computers, then that's really what you have to do. And that's generally a specialist security company would do that. Of course, large companies do it themselves. Uh, but but, the, but this is a it's, a... it's a lot of work, and, of course, the attackers do change all the time. So it really... I mean, in many ways, it, it's writing a check. I think 
the other side of it, though, is, is because New Zealand's uh, got a lot of you know small, medium-sized companies, and we're very outward-facing to the world. Um, I think that now is that, you know we, we need to start thinking about a national strategy for this a little bit, and seeing whether we can s- somehow support uh, certainly small, medium enterprises so that they can have access to some of the high high technology and sort of relatively high cost um, uh, protections. Uh, as an insurance policy rather than having to pay for it all themselves. So are we waiting for these cyber attackers to get bored, basically, and move on to somewhere else? You say the way we get rid of it is by, well, outsmarting them, defeating it. So they've tried it one couple of companies, had no luck, so they move on to the next one. Are we just waiting till they get bored of going from one shop to another, basically tossing rocks at the window? What happens is that... Is that our- Every time there's an attack, there's a sort of signature of it. So, so there'll be uh, characteristics of how the attack is being run, where the, where the attack's coming from, maybe what data is being used in the attack, frequencies and things like that. So as that gets more known, uh, we can set up our firewalls to automatically detect these things, and that'll be happening at all sorts of levels, from the sort of company level to ISP level to the sort of uh, international connections level. Uh, and these get better so that the attacks don't get through. So it, it's a sort of arms race, and I suppose it's, a, it's sort of like having a, uh, an idea of, you know, if somebody sort of goes in and splits the next time, there's a picture of them so they don't get that in the shop. Um, and I think that that's, that's going to be happening. Uh, and at the same time, if they're not getting uh, any um, r- um, ransoms being paid or whatever, then there is a cost to them in terms of risk uh, of both uh, being caught, which is relatively low risk, but also more the data about their attacks will be spread around the world as well, so those attacks will become less effective. So it's a low value for them once, uh, if they're not going to get the ransom, they don't want to use up all their, their new tricks uh, just to sort of demonstrate. So, Dave, could you put a dollar amount on how much New Zealand would have to invest in order to have tip-top security when it comes to this kind of thing? Look, I mean, uh, I think the Aussies have just put, uh, you know, just sort of sort of a billion dollars or whatever. It's not going to be that much, but it's it's going to be a large amount of money. I mean, I suspect that if hundreds you of millions, level, Dave. Hundreds of millions is probably the sort of number. Yeah. Is it worth it? That's a lot of money. It is, but of course, every transaction, uh, you know, the, the size of the economy, uh, potentially if the economy, economy can be um, um, critically damaged by these attacks, then um, that, that's very serious for the whole country. It also means that there'll be a, a for short term it's okay, but longer term there will be a loss of confidence uh, in New Zealand uh, as, as a place to sort of invest your money or whatever. So I do think it's worth thinking about it, but certainly one of the things that we do have to do is start putting this sort of um, risk uh, very much front of government so that we, we understand that, you know, just as we weren't worried about COVID until it came, you know, this is something that's coming in. We've got very good uh, procedures for things like earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, etc. We need to start putting this, this sort of uh, defence and these sort of crisis management up higher our priority. There are really good teams in the government. There are really good teams in, in the ISPs, but they're small and they don't, they don't have the resources that overseas um, organisations will have. Appreciate your time this evening. That is Professor Dave Parry, who's from AUT's Department of Computer Science.